Hey guys, welcome back to Kindergarten Ready. Okay, tonight we are gonna finish up the chapter book that we've been reading this week, Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus. It's written by Barbara Park. It is illustrated by the awesome Denise Brunkus. And we're gonna start with chapter eight. Okay, remember, Junie B. Jones, she hid after the first day of kindergarten and didn't get on the bus. So now she's hiding around the school, okay? So chapter eight's called The Dangerous Nurse's Office. Guess where I ran to? Straight to the nurse's office, of course, because there's those little plaid blankets to hide under. There's other neat stuff in there, too, like a scale to weigh yourself and a sign with a giant E in other letters. The nurses use a sign to test your eyes. She points to the letters, and you have to yell out the names. You have to yell E the loudest. That's how come it's so big. And guess what else I saw in the nurse's office? Band-Aids, that's what. I love those guys. Mm, can you guys make a connection? Do any of you love Band-Aids? I bet you do. They were on top of the desk, and so I opened the lid and I sniffed them. <sighs> Said, because Band-Aids smell just like a brand new beach ball. Then I dumped them out. They were the most prettiest Band-Aids I ever saw. They were red and blue and green and also yellow, which is the color I hate. They were different shapes, too. There were squares and circles and some of that very long kind, which are called tangles, I think. Excuse me. Is that, are they called tangles? I think they're called rectangles, right? I put a green circle on my knee. That's where I fell down on the sidewalk, sidewalk last week. It's mostly all better now, but if I press very hard with my thumb, I can still make it hurt. After that, I got a blue tangle from my finger. That's where I got a splinter from the picnic table. Mother pulled it out with some tweezers, but there's still some table in there, I think. Also, I put a red square on my arm. That's where Tickle scratched me because I got him all wound up. Well, just then I saw the nurse's purple sweater. It was hanging on her chair. I put it on. Now I'm the nurse, I said. Then I sat down and I pretended to call the hospital. Hello, hospital. It's me, the nurse. I need some more Band-Aids and some aspirins and some cherry cough drops. Only not the kind that make your mouth feel freezy. And I need some lollipops for the kids get needles. And also, I need a little stick or something in case I have to touch that dangly thing that hangs down in your throat. Then I pretended to call room nine. Hello, missus. Please send that Jim to my office. I have to give him a shot. She's being rotten, ain't she? <laughs> Just then, I saw my favorite thing in the whole world. They were near the door, and their name is Crutches. All right, crutches are for when you break a leg, and then the doctor puts it in a big white cast with just your little piggies sticking out, and you can't walk. And also, she gives you crutches, and so she gives you crutches to swing yourself. I ran over and picked them up, and then I put them under my arms, only they were way too long for me, and I didn't swing that good. And then I got another idea. I carried them to the nurse's chair. Oh, dear. So there, and I was real tall, and I put the crutches right under my arms, and they fitted just right. After that, I stood on the edge of a chair, and I leaned forward very slow, except for then a terrible thing happened. The chair was on wheels, and it rolled away from my feet, and I got stuck in the crutches way high in the air, and I was very dangly up there. Hey, I shouted, get me down from here. And then I wiggled all around, and one of the crutches slipped. And I came crashing down and I banged my head on the desk. Ow, 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 ow. Then I picked up the phone again. I quit this stupid job, I said. And then I ran out of there very fast because the nurse's office is a dangerous place and crutches are not my favorite thing. This is her dangling on the crutches. Look at her face. Does that look like panic to you guys? <laughs> Chapter nine is called Zooming Speedy Fast. I like running inside the school. It's funner than running inside your house. In school, you can zoom with your arms out like a jet plane, and you don't even knock over furniture. And also, the head doesn't get broken off your mother's bird statue, which used to be a jaybird, I think. I zoomed straight to the cafeteria because there's lots of tables to hide under in that place. Only when I tried to open the door, it was all locked up. And so then I ran around to another room across the hall, and that stupid door was locked too. Hey, who did all this dumb locking? I said. Then I started jiggling up and down because I was having a little bit of a problem, that's why. 
the kind of problem that's called personal. And it's going, it's about going to the potty. And so all of a sudden I had to run down the hall, speedy quick, right to the girl's bathroom. Only guess what? When I got there, that stupid door wouldn't open either. And so I kicked it and I hanged on the handle because I weighed 37 pounds. Open up and I mean it. I yelled, but that door kept on staying shut. It's emergency, I shouted. But then all of a sudden, I remembered about that boy that I can beat up, because he had an emergency too, and he got to go into the boys' bathroom. So I zoomed across the hall and I pulled on the boys' bathroom door, but that dumb thing was locked too. Stupid, stupid doors, I hollered. And after that, I started to jiggle up and down very fast. Oh no, oh no, now I'm gonna have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Only just then, I remembered something else about emergencies. Cause mama told me what to do if I ever needed help. And this name is called 911. So I ran back to the dangerous nurse's office cause that's where the phone was of course. And I picked it up and I pushed nine and the one and another one. Help, this is emergency. I yelled, all the doors are locked in this place and I'm gonna have a terrible accident. Then I heard a voice on the other end. She said for me to calm down. Yeah, only I can't cause I'm in big trouble and I'm here all by myself and I need help real bad. Then the lady said to calm down again, except for I couldn't stand still. And so I just hung up and ran right out of there. And I just kept running and running till I got to the big doors at the end of the hall. And then I run right outside, cause maybe there might be a little toilet paper, a little toilet out there or something. Except I didn't see one. All I could hear was sirens. Loud sirens were all over the place. And they kept on getting closer and closer. And then a big green fire truck came zooming around the corner. And a white police car. And a fast red ambulance. And guess what else? They turned right into the school parking lot. And so I stopped jiggling for just a second. And I sniffed the air. Only I couldn't smell smoke. And then I heard a grouchy voice. Hey, hold it, missy. It yelled, and I got very scared inside because Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I turned around. It was the man with the can, and he was running at me. Check it out, guys. I think she's been caught. What do you think? Hold it right there, he hollered, and then I started to cry. Yeah, only that's the trouble. I can't hold it. I said, I hold it. already holded it all I can and now I'm having emergency and all the bathrooms are locked and I'm gonna have an accident very quick. And then the man with the can didn't look so grouchy anymore. Well, why didn't you say so, sis, he said. And then he pulled a bunch of keys out of his pocket and he grabbed my hand. And then him and me zoomed back into the school, speedy fast. Okay, very last chapter, you guys ready? <laughs> chapter 10, me and Grace, me and that Grace. The man with the can unlocked the girl's bathroom for me and I ran right in there. And guess what? I made it. That's what. I didn't have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Whew, that was a close one, I said. Then I washed my hands at the sink and I looked in the mirror and the gold star was still on my forehead. It looked very beautiful up there. After that, I went into the hall and the man with the can bended down to me. Everything okay, sis, he said. And so I nodded my head. I holded it. I said, very happy. Then all of a sudden, there were lots of people running at us. There were firemen and policemen, and there was a tall lady rolling a bed on wheels. Hey, I said to the man with the can, what happened? Did somebody get run over in here or something? And then I saw Mrs. and Principal and Mother. They were running at us too. And then Mother bended down and hugged me very tight. And that, after that, everybody started talking at once. And nobody was using their quiet voices. And nobody was smiling either. Principal started asking me a jillion questions. Mostly they were questions about hiding in the supply closet. I'm a good hider, I told him. Principal acted a little bit grumpy. He said I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. When you go to school, you have to follow the rules, he said. What would happen if every boy and girl hid in a supply closet after school? It would be very smushy in there, I said. Then his, he made his eyes frowny. But we wouldn't know where anyone was, would we? He asked. Yes, I said. We would all be in the supply closet. Well, then Principal looked up at the ceiling, and I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything again. After that, Mother looked at my band-aids. Did you hurt yourself, she asked. Here's the picture. And so I told her all about the dangerous nurse's office. And then I showed her the, prince, the nurse's purple sweater and she made me give it back. 
After that, everybody started leaving, the firemen and the policemen and also the tall lady with the bed. And finally, my mother got to take me home. And guess what? I didn't have to ride the stupid smelly bus. Except for the car wasn't that fun because mother was grouchy at me. I'm sorry the bus wasn't fun for you, Jenny B., she said, but what did what you did was very, very wrong. Didn't you see all the commotion you caused? You had a lot of people very scared. Yes, but I didn't want chocolate milk poured on my head, I explained to her. That's not going to happen, growled Mother, and you can't just suddenly decide for yourself not to ride the bus. Hundreds of kids ride the buses every day, and if they can do it, you can do it too. Then my eyes got wet again. Yeah, but... There's meanies on that thing, I said all sniffly. Then mother stopped being so growly. What if you had a friend to ride with, she said. Your teacher told me there's a girl in your class who will be riding the bus for the first time tomorrow. Maybe you could sit together. Would you like that? I made my shoulders go up and down. Her name is Grace, said mother. Grace, I said, hey, I know that Grace. I learned her today. So when we got home, mother called that Grace's mother and then we they talked and then me and Grace me and that Grace talked too. I said hi, and she said hi, and she said she would sit with me. And so tomorrow, I get to take my little red purse on the bus, and I get to put it in the seat next to me so nobody will sit there. Nobody except for that Grace, of course. And then she and me might get to be buddies, and we can hold hands, just like me and Lucille. I will like that, I think. And guess what else? Tomorrow, I think I might like yellow a little bit too. All right, so that was the end of our chapter book, Jenny B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus. Okay, I want you guys to answer a few comprehension questions for me, okay? All right, what is her teacher's name? That's the first one. What room number is she in? What is the room number of her classroom? That's two. And I want you to pick out one thing that Jenny B. Jones says that is her most favoritest thing in the whole world. Because she said it about a few things in the book. Okay? All right. So I want you guys to have an awesome night and sweet dreams. And we will see you next time. Good night.